common complaint that I hear is that people want to play different games. They want to play little-known games. But when they walk into the local store, it's just the 800-pound gorilla. It's 40K. It's fantasy, maybe. Sometimes it's um, War Machine and Hordes. But it's hard to find people who play some of the smaller games. I'm not even talking about indie stuff. I'm just talking about games that are not necessarily that top tier, like, uh, like the Games Workshop stuff that you hear so much about. And when people want to play those games, it's hard to find someone to play with. It's also sometimes hard to find the stores that actually stock the stuff. Now, obviously, with the Internet, you've got lots of choices, and you can go out there and buy things. Um, so that's not as big of an issue as it is as it was in the past. But you still need to be able to find people to play against, and that's the big trick. My belief is that if you want to play something specific, if you want to play something that's maybe a smaller game, maybe it's indie, maybe it's not indie, it's just not necessarily widespread, you need to become an advocate for that game. You kind of have to take the reins and be a bit proactive and get people to play it. The guy who had the first fax machine didn't really have anything useful on his hands because who was he going to fax? You see what I'm saying? But as soon as there was a second person with a fax machine, now he had somebody to fax. Therefore, the worth of his fax machine increased quite a bit. As the network, as any network expands, it increases in value. If you go out and find this awesome game and you buy it and you paint up all the figures and you go through all of that stuff and you learn the rules and you have no one to play with, it doesn't have much value. So what you have to do is you have to go out and show that person the fax machine. You have to go out there and say, okay, I'm really interested in this game and I'm going to not only learn about it and paint my own figures, I'm even going to maybe paint up a second force and I'm going to teach people. I'm going to go to the local shop and say, hey, who's looking to find out more about a different game, maybe? Who's looking to, maybe you heard about it online, I can teach it to you. And now we can play, and then maybe that person will then go out and buy their own copy of the game and get their own figures, and now all of a sudden you've got two people. And then eventually you're going to have three people, and then it's just going to keep going. I'm currently doing this with Dust Warfare. Um, Dust Warfare is a game currently by Fantasy Flight Games, or being distributed by Fantasy Flight Games. It's soon to be distributed by Battlefront um, out of New Zealand, the makers of Flames of War. So they're going to be on a much, I'm assuming, much more global scale soon because of having this international distributor. Dust Warfare is kind of a skirmish game. It's still fewer figures than some of your bigger army games. Your um, more Hammer, you know, um, Kings of War, Warhammer 40k, that kind of stuff. But the great thing about that game is that the figures are already put together and they're already pre-primed and pre-base coded in a color. So the Axis guys are all gray, the Allies guys are all green. So trying to get newer people into it is great because they don't have to then learn about as much of the craft if they don't want to. They don't have to put the things together, they don't have to shave off the mold lines, all that jazz. But it's still a game that people are going to want to learn. It's very difficult for a lot of people, myself included, honestly, to sit down, read a book, and then start playing that game. More often than not, I find, I have to stumble through the first game after reading the book, or stumble through the first couple of games. And then every time I go back and I read the book, everything makes a lot more sense to me once I've gone that point. But you have to make those first couple of steps. If somebody can teach you the game who knows it already, you are much more likely to keep continuing forward in that situation. You have to become an advocate. You have to take the reins a bit if you want people to start playing a specific game in your local area. You will hear sometimes online, oh, you know, at our local store, you know, Malifaux is really super popular and we've got tons of players all the time. That didn't just happen, generally. Normally, some sort of instigator comes along and says, hey, I found out about this really cool new game, and we should all start playing it. Um, I've got two small forces here. I'll play one, you play the other, and then I'll show you how the game works. When that kind of stuff happens, all of a sudden, a group of people playing that game, a community, can crop up pretty much almost overnight. It's easier if it's a skirmish game, honestly. This is the box for the 
uh, Von Schill crew for Malifaux, and it is for the Outcast faction. This is the entire starter. It's a little bit smaller than an old school VHS tape. Six guys in here. Retails for like 45 bucks. This is all you need to get going because you can download the rules on the website. You put these guys together, you paint them or don't, whatever, you're still learning the game. It's fine to play with non-painted miniatures um, when you're still learning the game. And you can really go from there. It's very easy, if you're the instigator, to take that box set and another box set and then go to the shop and say, who wants to play? Pick a box set, we're gonna play, we're gonna learn it. And once you've learned it, it's much easier for you to start teaching it to people and then eventually that community grows. In my mind, this is the only way that smaller game companies can really gain traction in the market. And you see most of these smaller game companies having some sort of uh, volunteer core. They have, uh, let's see, with Weird Miniatures from Malifaux, I know they have guys called um, Henchmen. I know that Privateer Press, which is still kind of small in comparison, they have their press gangers. A lot of them have these demo teams, these street teams, and it's guys who go and give demos at stores, and they basically end up getting free product, credit towards product, something along those lines. Depends on the company. But this kind of stuff is only part of what these kind of companies need to keep pushing product in to kind of get saturation into the market. What they really need are advocates. People who are going to pick up the game because they're really interested in it, love the figures, love the story, love the rule set, whatever, and move forward and start teaching other people because these things just don't grow in a vacuum. Somebody's got to take the reins. Somebody moves forward. So if it's not happening around you, there's a specific game that you think seems real interesting, it's going to have to be you if you want it to move forward. You're going to have to step up and say, would you like to play this game? Would you like, I will show you. And you don't have to do it to strangers. You could work with people that you like, people that you know, and get them moving. And then you're going to see other people who are going to start to gravitate at your store and see what you're doing and ask questions. And maybe you set up a game with them in the future. Obviously, with the internet, Facebook, all that stuff, it's very easy to set up a group. It's very easy to set up communication. Your local store probably has a Facebook page. You can go on there and say, hey, I'm looking on Saturday afternoon to play a game of Dust Warfare. Who's interested in giving it a try? That's all you got to do. This upcoming Sunday, I'm running a game of Dust Warfare for a guy I know, and um, he's already got some figures because he's a painter and likes to paint, and he thinks they're cool-looking figures, but eventually this will probably become something that he might do more of, and then that's going to be three or four guys that I know at the shop who I've kind of gotten into it, and uh, hopefully it'll keep growing, and eventually maybe we'll even have a tournament. Who knows? But the fact is... When you're the only player in a game, you're not going to have much fun. So you have to move it forward. You have to become an advocate and get other people to play these games. Otherwise, you're stuck playing the one game that everybody else plays, whether you like it or not.